Hi again, it's Pastor Mark here at Brant Naz, Brantford Church of the Nazarene in Brantford. It's good to have you join me today for my Take a Break feature where I take a bit of time every Wednesday to answer questions about the Christian faith, about the Bible that you've asked. We're on the shores of the Niagara River that you see behind me here. And every time I look at a river, I think of a, a situation, a, a phrase that my friend had reminded me of years ago when I told him I was facing a challenge or a circumstance that I was having difficulty getting control of or, or managing. And he said, Mark, you need to remember that a river cuts its own path. There's sometimes there's uh, problems or challenges and events in life that we go through that a river cuts its own path and chooses which way it's gonna go. And so when I think of the river behind us now, I think of that, that the river cuts its own path. It reminds me, uh, partly that this week, of the question that was sent to me, it reminds me of that, that sometimes the river cuts its own path. The person wrote in and asked this, the Bible says Jesus overcame the world. Why doesn't it feel like it? The world is a mess right now, it seems. Well, first of all, Jesus did, in say, did indeed say that he overcame the world. And then second, I think when we take the time to look around us, we do find at times that it does seem the world hasn't been overcome by Jesus, but the world has been overcome by evil, whether it's natural disasters that we see with uh, hurricanes and tornadoes and floods and earthquakes and all sorts of things like that, whether it's man-made disasters like uh, violent acts that are carried out or wars that are carried on, we can wonder, how did Jesus overcome the world? Well, to understand that a bit, we need to put it in a bit of context. Jesus did indeed say in John 16, 33, he had overcome the world. Well, John 16, 33 is a part of a bigger picture of the portion of the Bible known as the final discourse of Jesus. Jesus had been talking to the disciples and he had been telling them that he was going to be betrayed and that he was going to have to, not, not going to have to, but he was going to leave them, but the Holy Spirit would come to them. So he was, he was giving them some bad news, but he was giving them some good news in, in his perspective too. So in the context of this, Jesus saying he's overcome the world, he's saying it in the context in an encouraging way to them, but also in a finer context of not just the final discourse of Jesus, but in the verse that he says that you're going to overcome, the he has overcome the world. In the context of that verse, that very same verse, he said to them, in this world, you will have trouble. So we can't take Jesus' statement of saying he has overcome the world. It's saying there's not gonna be trouble. There's not gonna be challenges. There's not gonna be difficulties. There's not gonna be sickness or anything like that in the world, that will be here. But he did know that he has overcome the world to do that. So we see that in the context of that, that's not exactly what Jesus meant. But in the context of those verses too, we also see that not only when he says, I overcame, I have overcome the world, but he lets them know that they will have challenges. He lets them know that peace can be theirs. A peace can be theirs. The Bible tells us that we can have a peace that goes beyond our understanding. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, it tells us there, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And here's the key part. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, the peace of God, which goes beyond our comprehension, the peace of God that we have that can only be experienced, will guard your hearts and minds. How? In Christ Jesus. So there's a peace that we can have in Christ Jesus to be with us to do that. In other words, we can have a peace in the times of difficulty. We even have, can have a peace in the times of challenge that goes beyond the circumstances themselves and a peace that is found in Christ. The saying goes, the battle has been, in Jesus, sorry, Jesus himself even said it as a part of the final discourse, the early part of it in chapter 14, verse 27, he says, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. As he departs, he's saying, I give you peace. So that peace comes from Jesus himself. The saying goes, the battle has been won, but the war is still, to be, sorry, the battle has been won, but there's still a war to fight. Well, in Jesus, it's kind of the opposite of that. We can say there's battles along the way, there's challenges along the way, there's difficulties along the way. And for each of us, that's different. It could be a, a pink slip given at work. It could be a medical diagnosis. It could be a relationship challenge that we have of difficulties that we have where we're still fighting individual wars, but with Jesus, sorry, individual battles, but with Jesus, the war has already been won. 
through his death and resurrection, he has won the war. We know what the final result is going to be. So when he says, I have overcome the world, we need to look to him for that peace that we can have in the time of difficulty, in the time of challenge, so that as we go through those battles, they're a part of this fallen world that we live in. As we go through those battles, we can come to him for the peace that goes beyond our understanding. Not a peace that we gain mental knowledge of, but a peace that we sense within our hearts. A peace that gives us assurance that we experience, not with that. See the difficulty of having a live video? We get the live sounds in the background. You can probably hear that horn as it goes with that too. But that peace that the Bible describes as transcending all understanding can be ours in Christ Jesus. And if you would like to know more about that peace that we can have in our times of difficulty, in our times of challenge, I would encourage you to contact me either through a private message here on Facebook or through a, uh, an email. If you can email me at brantnazmark at gmail.com. Brantnazmark, all one word, B-R-A-N-T-N-A-Z, N-E-Z, Mark, M-A-R-K, at gmail.com. You can contact me there. So thanks once again for joining me. Here we are today on the beautiful shores of the Niagara River, as we see it there. And I'll uh, give a brief scan of that just before I sign off here. But I invite you to as well join us on Sunday morning at 1030, whether you want to join us live at 347 Fairview Drive in Brantford, or here on Facebook Live, the Branton Ayers Facebook group page at 1030 Sunday morning. We'll be there. If not, we'll see you. Look forward to having you join us again next Wednesday. So here, enjoy this view of the Niagara River.